Hey, Courtney. Hi, I made it. <laughs> I never thought 9 a.m. was so early, but it really is. <laughs> זה אמור להיות לפי מי שמדבר. Hi, Ruben and Yehudi. I just noticing. Shalom, shalom, Ulam. Hi, Avi. No, Pitom Ziti or Avi. Ah, No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. ‫השתנה <laughs> 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 אבי, אולי תדבר עוד קצת, כי לא שמעו אותך קודם? שומעת אותי עכשיו? עכשיו כן. ‫לא, זה לא פיוט, זה לא פיוט. ‫-אה, 
Okay, uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, do you hear me, Robin? Yes. Robin? Yes. Okay. Yes. But I don't see you. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, welcome to everybody. The, the, all the Israeli visitors, the artists. Uh, we are here with uh, Eddie Abergel, Sue Ellen, and uh, Judith Sostortas. Uh, and we will start uh, with a uh, uh, description of uh, the idea, uh, the idea behind uh, all, the, all the process of uh, creating this uh, exhibition. So, uh, Ruben? Oh, you, uh, that's okay. Uh, um, thank you all for everything. Um, and please allow me to express my enormous thanks to each of you who are on this Zoom from around the world. Um, I'm going to be reading a little bit in order to minimize my jitters and to save time. Um, so to, to artists, supporters, curators, museum team, and family and friends, the success of this phase of memory project is due to each of you. Um, hopefully these thanks and a quick overview of memory project will provide the infrastructure and fill in some blanks so everyone can better understand how we even arrived here today. Our generous patrons trusted in the process that was a start and go all the way and their patience was truly amazing as was the artist's flexibility, particularly those from New Orleans, who we started with four abundance crates um, of work, four crates filled with artist work from New Orleans that had to be last minute consolidated into flat small works from New Orleans. Because of COVID, because of Russia, it was consolidated at the last minute and everyone a really adjusted without any judgment on, on me, which I truly appreciate. Um, and Soren, I'm gonna thank you first, backwards, put the structure into how we got here today. Um, Soren Heller jumped in midstream after a major disruption forced Memory Project to cancel. His calm nature and professionalism guided me over for over two years. He miraculously remained within a very modest budget despite COVID setbacks and his own health risks. Thorne chose Israeli and Palestinian artists for their um, valuable insight about places of memory and trauma, whose works paired seamlessly with the work of artists from New Orleans and Lodge who had completely disparate backgrounds. And it's Soren who introduced the Memory Project to Avi, director of Bar David Museum. Avi and your team did wonders. Thanks for welcoming Memory Project into your beautiful museum and creating the title, Avi, In Search of Lost Memory. For your countless hours that you spent organizing and hanging an impeccable exhibition and producing an amazing catalog designed by one of the exhibition artists, Atraf Fakari. Is that how you say Fakari? Fakari, Avi? Sorry? And thanks to Ashra for providing your beautiful design talents and your powerful painting. Without a friend who's no longer here, may his memory be a blessing, Vic Hoffman, he on his own, without asking me or worrying me, he reached out to a prominent Israeli gallerist who then reached out to Soren because Vic realized that our, our project had been canceled at the last minute in 2019. 
And it was Vic Hoffman in Israel who drove from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv to, to find someone interested in relaunching memory projects. Um, so the entire endeavor began with trust and understanding between two very special strangers. Thanks Gorecki Levy, my mom, who lives in New Orleans, her phenomenal trust, and then Marta Medeska, whose deep empathic understanding co connected with me and my mother. Mom, a Holocaust survivor who immigrated to New Orleans, wanted to return to her birth city, Ludge, for the first time in 73 years. And Marta, a PhD student of memory studies, enthusiastically replied to my random email, seeking professional partnership in Ludge. I explained my desire to connect mom's history with the current citizens in mom's birth city without them experiencing a victim tour. Marta immediately understood the complexities and layers of memory associated with places where trauma has occurred and the risks of bringing mom back to Ludge. So after months of discussing the theme of collective trauma in place, we chose to highlight childhood memory, happy memories before the war. And we used these childhood memories as source material for participating published artists. We combined mom's one happy pre-war memory of getting ice cream and balloons on Sunday with her father, with oral histories Marta had already collected from the elders about their World War II childhood to eventually share with the Polish artists. Marta then gathered interested people from her enormous creative circle in Ludge for my visit to Ludge in April of 2012 with my American nephew, Sean, and Israeli niece, Ruth, who I enlisted for both of their insights so the next generation could inform our decisions. An initial group gathered in Adam's, is Adam on the call? So we, Marta, can you pronounce that Adam's gallery? It's, Adam's Gallery in Lodge. Galeria Wschodnia. Okay. Galeria Wschodnia. Thank you. It's so this is Marta and she's the miraculous um, initial partner who made our exhibition a success in Lodge. Um, so she, got together with Adam and they hosted us so we could brainstorm in this gallery, which began memory projects taking shape. Adam was generous with his gallery, which is where we hosted the physical space of artists' work. And then altogether, memory project phase one was the magical commemorative experience that became a grassroots series of events, including an exhibition at, at Adams, a community outdoor film screening, thanks to Piat for his elegant film that we screened outside in front of a huge um, apartment building with hundreds of people looking on and hundreds of people in the streets watching Piat's amazing melancholy film. <clears throat> then we also organized a performance, an interactive performance inside the shuttered building that the film was projected against. And in addition to all of these things, for mom's sake, we also made sure to provide a traditional memorial tribute 
for her and her family at the Merrick Edelman Holocaust Memorial Park. When I originally reached out to Martha, I had mentioned that we in New Orleans have our own history of traumatic legacies. Our trauma it comes from very different sources. It's albeit very different kind of trauma than I was bringing mom back to in Poland. So we brought the Polish artists to New Orleans and together with Deborah Luster and Courtney Egan, we combined the Polish work and the New Orleans artists who spoke beautifully and poignantly about New Orleans' own legacy of trauma. Um, if it were not for these grassroots engagements in both Ludd and New Orleans, the success of this would not have happened. It was the fiscal agent of Antenna in New Orleans that helped pull all of this together. And it was uh, community artists like, a, like Elizabeth Shannon in New Orleans who brought food into the mix and allowed New Orleans artists to share cultural identities and Polish artists share their cultural identities through food. Um, and then we are now here with three additional New Orleans artists, um, Carl Joe Williams, John Isaiah Walt, and Luis Cruz Alpita which um, the Israeli curators chose these works from these additional artists to show a fuller view of the work coming out of the city that reflects New Orleans' complicated history of trauma. So I hope that gives a quick overview and I didn't take too much time. Um, okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, I say some people uh, joined to, to this uh, talk and uh, they supported uh, uh, all the create this uh, exhibition and the catalog. And uh, uh, I serve this moment to, to thank them. Thanks for them. And uh, so, uh, uh, Hi, Robin. Hi, hi, Screen. Great to see you. <laughs> okay, already passed more than two years. So, first of all, I want to thank all the artists and all the others who helped uh, bring up this ex exhibition. And uh, and to thank you for your trust on me and on Abby, and uh, because we never met just the day, two days before the, the exhibition was open, and uh, thank you for what you all have done and. Uh, as, as I told you on my first mail, you got a great idea for an uh, artistic event, um, referring to memory and then referring to identity, and uh, which is the, the, the diverse issue in each country and connecting them together. I think it should be another stage of this exhibition and future it is a, it, it was really really a great idea and, and I, I became enthusiastic on the first moment i wrote your words so here we, here we are and uh, it's almost the end no yeah it's, it's almost the end half a year of our uh, journey and um, 
I don't want to talk about the exhibition because uh, they have this catalog, very nice catalog, uh, referring to each artist and, uh, and each work. Uh, but, what I, but the outcome that we see now is not only um, speaking about ident identity and uh, memory, but as Abby told me from the beginning, it's a political exhibition. It, but it's, it's memory is laid. It's not a placard exhibition. And in these days, uh, it's uh, it's uh, really it's very actual. Um, my job was to choose a work, to set the work, and we have been through a lot of selections of works all the time, but we arrived at the stage with this wonderful pieces from the uh, New Orleans and the uh, Dutch uh, artists and the uh, Polish artists. Uh, just in as now a sentence in partial. And uh, of course, with the Israeli artists. Uh, I just, it's hard for me to, to leave this exhibition. It's, it's, I leave it, I, it, it was my life for two years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, but uh, I think we have diverse, diverse attitudes to our memory and uh, identity. And uh, I think the uh, artists uh, uh, should tell more about it than me. So thank you all. And thank you, Robin. And best thank Abby, because Abby really, really did a job. From the beginning, he believed in us and all we see, all was done, all the exhibition, all, all the logistical things, all the uh, um, day out of the exhibition, and all the catalog, it's Abbey. Without Abbey, wouldn't be. Really, really, really. Thank you, Abbey. Thanks, but uh, I would like to. I would like to uh, put uh, uh, confront uh, the, the works of uh, Deborah Lufter. And then, De you hear me? Yeah. Deborah Lufter and uh, the way she dig in, in, into the archives of the police and uh, confronted with uh, the works of Hadar Gad, which is uh, digging the surface of the, the canvas. So uh, a two two way two ways of uh, uh, evoking the memory. Uh, Hadargad uh, she uh, she created the memory, uh, or uh, uh, she painted the memory on the surface of the painting by using uh, several layers of the uh, paint and uh, uh, by uh, scraping uh, the surface. Uh, she evoke uh, the image, and Deborah Luster. It's uh, if she is she is with us. I would like to to hear uh, her process. If she, this is a uh, if it is this way that she is working usually with the uh, archives. Is she is with us? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I, I can't really. Are, were you talking to me? I'm talking to Deborah. Yes, Deborah. That's, that's me. Um, yeah, I'm having. Uh, okay. I have an old, nice, <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I have an old computer and I can't hear it too, too well. I can't understand too well. But um, I just seeing you all there. I you know you, the people of Israel have been on all of our minds and uh, and we're just really praying that. Um, all of this is resolved and 
favor of democracy and the people there. I, I don't, I can't imagine what you are all going through. So anyway, um, what, what was the question? <laughs> uh, I would like to, to know exactly the process of uh, the way you work, uh, I mean, to create uh, uh, images uh, 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 according to the, I mean, uh, information from the archives so and then you are going and trying to find the places when uh, have been murdered oh uh, yeah and, well um, and i'm curious if uh, it's, it's, it is the way this is a conceptual way of you work or... okay i think i got it <laughs> uh the um tooth for an eye which is the homicide project um, is really the sister project to an earlier project, which was another archive. And I was concerning myself with the consequences of violence. And um, so the, the first project was a, a very long um, project where I photographed um, portraits of inmates in Louisiana. Um, I gave, and it was called One Big Self. So it was an archive of images of, of inmates, prisoners that volunteered and posed themselves. And, and then I returned images to them. And so that was the first part. And, this, and then so the Tooth for an Eye, uh, the homicide sites um, are, sort of a re, are sort of a sister project to that earlier project. And um, so my process was um, that I would go through uh, the Times Picking paper here and, and, and their archives and just write down all of these homicide sites um, throughout the city. At that time, and when I started this about 2008, uh, New Orleans was the homicide capital of the United States. Um, and of course, the United States, I think, or maybe it's Mexico, uh, was, you know, um, um, heavily homicided. <laughs> so I would write all these, these uh, addresses down and then I would map them on, I had maps that were sections of the city and I would map them and locate them on these little maps. And then I would go out with my, um, eight by 10 camera and I would um, drive around, make sure it seemed safe. And um, I would get out and uh, take a photograph in that place. If they didn't have a specific address, then I would, it would usually be a block and I would find an image there. Um, so, um, that, and then I, I bound these into ledgers, and so I would just do very minimal text to describe the person, um, the date, and the location, and any notes that were in the paper about the homicide, like um, stabbed, shot, multiple shot, so um, like that. So, um, <laughs> so um so that's that's sort of the process um that i used and i bound those into six large handmade volumes and and i can had a uh, a viewing tape um constructed and so these these out these these ledgers would be out on this viewing table and people could come and just go through them and it was very interesting when it showed here at Prospect One, and that was, I don't even remember when that was, 2008 or nine or something. Um, I would go into the gallery and I, I really didn't think people would look at those, those ledgers, but I would go in there and there were, every time I went in there, the people would just be turning the pages and looking at them and I'd kind of go up and maybe say something to somebody and inevitably someone would say, my brother was 
um, murdered, my father was murdered, my sister, my, you know, it was just, it was, it was really uh, moving to see this work exhibited in this place where people recognized um, places and to be able to memorialize. I've been working on a history project and um, I recently, my mantra has been, um, we are trapped in history and history is trapped in us. And so here at the end of history, what seems like the end of history sometimes, there's a lot of, a lot trapped in all of us. So, um, so it's bottomless really, I guess. But um, that was my, um, my gesture to try to memorialize some of these people who'd lost their lives to violence. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think that uh, uh, can be great, whatever. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, the work of the Cosmic Club. Cosmic Club. Cosmic Club. And, uh, um, I joined this edition at the last stage. It's a part of the installation. And the basic was a uh, floor work, uh, and the letters uh, um, were, were installed on the floor. Uh, it was in the gallery, in the Tel Aviv Art Gallery, and it was a large installation. The letters. Um, I wanted to, uh, I think, uh, to express my antithetical um, attitude to our, to our the globe, the globe. I personalized the globe. Um, interesting issue that I worked with a lot of years. Uh, how the uh, the universe is a kind of a body, okay? and uh, the the personal subjectivity is is personal. So how the personal and the collective is uh, getting together. Uh, so the basic of this sentence uh, was a kind of a blessing for the world during the pandemic um, days. It was my uh, during the COVID days. And I couldn't go to the studio, so I went to like I have at home. And it was uh, basically the Babier Moshe, and it was something very simple. Uh, but I felt that I, I tried to bless, I tried to heal, I tried to, to send a blessing to the world, to the, to the global world, uh, the essence of uh, surviving, not as just the subjective uh, culture, but as uh, I think archetypical artist person um, that look at the world um, in a very cosmic way, I think. Uh, cosmic, personal, cosmic and uh, very, very physical even. Um, the second version here in this exhibition, uh, the letters become a kind of a slogan. Try, I try to, to give Space or a, a huge endless space of uh, even shouting in the space uh, or uh, calling in the space, like uh, in like to create some kind of uh, of a voice in the space, which I wanted that uh, somebody will hear and will connect all the energies through the the world, the nations, people all over the world. Many things happened since the COVID days. And here in Israel, it's uh, even a kind of a catastrophe uh, that is very uh, sharp. So um, now I think that we, this, I think global shouting is not relevant uh, for, for a moment, but, um, and we have to deal with a lot of things here in the space, in the place. But uh, basically, 
it's a universal problem. The, and love is a very, very essential subject, which I think that art can't be done without love or um, without um, compassion. And um, art is not just to, to create uh, desirable objects or commercial ob objects or to gain power and gain uh, status. Uh, art for me is a transformative uh, process. It, it's much more um, psychological and sociological and political and even spiritual. So my shout in the space, fragile cosmic club is calling, it's like, <laughs> In a way, it's a political calling for um, gathering uh, all, all, all the moments of uh, the possibility to be human, uh, to be sensitive. And so the beginning of this work began with the globe, which I wrote on it, uh, fragile, or fragile en français. So um, I tried to, you know, to, to, to make the, um, take the um, the universe as a kind of an object uh, and, uh, and, 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 and the words as a kind of an object. The word fragile is an object for me and I uh, used to do it uh, to write it on words even in Geneva in a mezzanine gallery I, I hanged it on the wall on a tissue on a canvas. First of all the viewers enter to a fragile space. This is the essence of art for me, rather than powerful or very, very impressive uh, spaces. So the moments of fragility are very important to me and that's what I can give to this exhibition. Fragile, then power, then force. <laughs> Thanks to Leti and uh, from uh, Cosmic Club to uh, Cosmic Club. Can, can, now I hear you. As the Tibat, you want to follow up on Marshu and the Kera Cosmic Club. So, Cosmic Club to Cosmic Club. So, first of, all, first of all, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Yudi. And I was very happy to hear my uh, very good friends, Eti. Eti? <laughs> yeah. So, because I felt um, uh, like we, you know, in a way, like speaking the same vocabulary in the same language. So, it's quite familiar. And um, so, the two drawings that I um, choose uh, when I've invited me into this beautiful um, topic of exhibition was the two cosmic rift drawings but um for me it always feels a bit strange to be honest just to speak as an artist about what we already did and for me i find it really interesting when i meet other artists and i feel their work i'm personally curious to hear what is actually i mean what what do we find as like a a fascinating value um, with with doing art. I mean, can can we change something? Can we add something? And um, and I can share just like personally that my my focus, um, one of my focus in my art is of course uh, traumatic experiences. That for um, very very simple understanding, life taught me was that. If someone went through an overwhelming experience that was not fully digested or something that I couldn't fully digest and I was overwhelmed by, so I've, I've noticed that something with um, common coherency between space, time and rhythm was broken. And, and the question is, if something got broken there and reality becomes a bit more fragmented to the subject, so what is the role of art or what is the power of the mute image as drawing, as sculpture, as whatever we do um, to communicate information that was locked in us or got frozen in us as subject, a human being. So 
even the name of the drawings that I uh, that are uh, that participate in this show deals with um, you, with a very very uh, simple interest that I had for years and still is with this um, I would say with this fragmented reality that things feels not fully coherent. And I was just thinking in the beginning of this Zoom that I couldn't really, I mean, there's a group there in the museum. There is a group here in the Zoom. I couldn't really, I couldn't really hear technically. And I thought, oh, it's interesting. This is a classical situation when, um, when reality, when we don't feel fully synchronized with reality. And then the question is, what is exactly happening in those gaps, in these gaps, which is for me, it's a classical portrait of I would say um, a reality that we would call that was, you know, um, tremendously affected by collective trauma and by many individuals that experienced something that was just too much for their system. So I would say that my interest is, as an artist and as well in, in these kind of drawings that are there is to create kind of, um, I would say, maps, maps uh, through drawings that can uh, describe the different layers that are not fully synchronized within the subject. And how, you know, we can create a situation that a mute image like a drawing can communicate through an active substance. If it's a good work of art, obviously it will work. But if a mute image is able to communicate information that the subject is not able to communicate anymore, because if I would be able to communicate, obviously I would be a writer or I don't know, I would give talks or I would, I would take, you know, another medium as, as a creative person. But my, my deep interest in mute images is about their power to communicate information which somehow is beyond language. And um, I was always fascinated by this and fascinated by more intense areas like human beings that went through intense experiences and some of this uh, undigested life information was able to communicate it to me, even though I came from another culture, from another language, and I still got it. I still got it. And more than that, I could feel touched, I could feel moved and, and, and something happened to me. So I'm very much with this, um, you know, the army of the, you know, the people who, who produce this um, kind of mute image images. And even though we are much slower, other people will say that, you know, artists are, uh, you know, um, you need time. We all need time, you know. But um, I think that we are what we are dealing with when we speak about trauma is um, on an ethical level, one of the most important tools that society needs. Society needs many people like us sitting in their bizarre studios and taking the time to feel, to listen, to contemplate. And, and by doing this, something is happening. Um, so I'm interested and I dedicate obviously a significant time of my life to do this kind of work. Sometimes the result is drawing, sometimes it's film, sometimes it's sculpture. But the power of the mute image that carries within its own body an active substance that can communicate something which is not verbal, which is not, you know, and still the other can get it. And by him activating, witnessing, something is going on on like much like on a collective level a much bigger scale i'm fascinated you know by this option and in this exhibition i i just put like two uh, out of hundreds of these kind of maps that i call them drawing and it's kind of like my profession became like um how can drawings can create kind of maps subconscious maps that are actually um following the traces um that we cannot really verbalize but they are there and they can function as a witnessing of a, a reality that is not fully synchronized reality that you know like the setting is um a structure that can definitely say something about what I, what is happening when the relation between space time and rhythm are not anymore coherent so I know that it sounds a bit abstract, but all of you are artists, so you, of course, know what I'm talking about. Um, and the drawing's name is Cosmic Rift. And for me, Cosmic Rift 
means that when the sub so it's about when things are intense and they can be intense i mean not only as israeli but at the moment as israeli they are quite intense <laughs> but when things are quite intense um you know like something is happening on the information that is on our you know glasses and the glasses that we look at reality through and i was i i've noticed that the more intense the undigestible life experience was the deeper will be you know the projection of this on someone else but as well you know my whole cosmic map my cosmic setting will be affected by this so i'm talking about the lack of synchronization between the individual life map and the cosmic you know life map I could elaborate about it hours, but maybe I will give the time to other. But for me, it's it's just fascinating to hear other artists sharing their own experience. I would say the very simple one, um, how they, I mean, what is the role of this mute image within the context of trauma, trauma memory, um, identity? I find it, uh, yeah, I think it's very, very important and very, very powerful, yeah. I hope I could answer to something, Avi. Thank you. Marek, would you like to join us? Yes, uh, yes absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, for, uh, thank you, Surin, for having me to, this, to the exhibition and Avi for your um, making this uh, project work. And, Thanks for everybody that came here today. It's, it's strange to do it for in Zoom. I'm I'm not a big talker anyhow, so do it like that. It's, mm -hmm. uh, a bit strange, it's really. Uh, I don't know really what to say. I didn't really prepare any words. Um, uh, you close you close uh, the Pinocchio so, and the uh, other rugs. Why why you why are you using rugs? Um. I don't know. I don't have any wise. I, I I don't any. I don't. I'm not a person of plans. I mostly react uh, to things. I'm very intuitive. I'm just doing things. I'm. I like things which are in motion. And I very spontaneously react to material, and if something grabs me, I just jump on it because it's not. Uh, it doesn't happen every day that something really surprises you and you like it. And, and uh, things are uh, jumping all around, but if there's already something that I like and I love it, so uh, even if it's a material or technique, I just uh, go for it. And uh, I've met this uh, machine. She, this machine met me. We have a strong relationship now. This machine and me, that's tough to be done. And um, uh, Something about me moved from painting to textile through a, through a memory that probably I already had in the past. And for me, it's funny to talk about memory, and especially to re relation to my work. I, I don't know, I, I don't really choose my memories. My memories are uh, what they are, and they make me what I am. Something about me. I mean, there are so many memories, but we remember so little about them. And those the small um, little memories, they are what made me what I am. So it's really strange because, I mean, in one day, uh, there is so many things that are happening, but we remember so little. Those little things make us who we are. So it's really bizarre to, to talk about memory and identity. Uh, I remember only little from my childhood, but this is who I am. It's really weird. I mean, uh, connected to a trauma. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. To, to, to be alive is to be a traumatic person, I suppose. And uh, that's life. It's hard. And we are what we are. I am what I am. Um, there is a. Mm, the reason my carpet, uh, it's, it's related to a specific trip that I made with my, make me with my girlfriend, with my partner. Mm -hmm. We were in Italy just before the Corona. And uh, I think it's uh, Firenze, it's full of Pinocchios. And it looked like there's clown, the army of cloning Pinocchios are hunting, are hunting us. 
they are everywhere. And I find it uh, spooky. And when we uh, went, when we came back to Israel, um, I started to do these drawings of those Pinocchios. And uh, actually we did this kind of together, created this images out of uh, uh, memories which we shared together to make this work. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say. Oh, Peter. Hello, Peter. Good evening. Peter. Hello, Peter. Peter. Oh, hi, it's Piotr. Good evening. <laughs> you can call me Peter. Sorry? Good evening, Piotr. Uh, I, I hope I pronounce your name correct. Uh, can you tell us about uh, your video art that uh, Collecting uh, several uh, points uh, of memories. Yeah, uh, it was a long time ago, so it's a kind of a time travel for me. But uh, it was 2012, I believe, that uh, uh, Marta addressed me that there is an artist coming from the United States, Robin Levy, who is here. And that there is, a, well, probably I shouldn't say all that because you know, yeah, right. It's 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 a it's an homage to, to her mother, and her uh, experience in Łódź. So there was a need of uh, creating a film, a documentary film. So I just decided to go on with memory, with my memory, uh, that is uh, connected to the city of Łódź and the district of Bauty that I was born in and raised. And actually it was also during the war, the, the ghetto. And uh, my memories were revolving around the, the building of uh, Helena Wolf Hospital, uh, a place that is now like uh, deserted and kind of ruined in, in the middle of some renovation, but stopped and, and it was a hospital um, after war, for um, I was born there, actually. Yeah, so like a lot of people from which from the 70s uh, in the 20th century were born in this hospital. And uh, I just decided to go on with some very uh, intimate um, memories. Hospital of the exist, yeah? This hospital doesn't uh, work anymore. No, no, no. It's it's probably not functioning since the nineties of the of the previous century. But then there was a plan of uh, making it into a hotel, uh, preserving the the uh, antique you know substance, the architectural substance. But due to some misunderstandings with the uh, city of which president and you know city council it was sort of stopped and uh, the building remains in its kind of semi-ruined form uh, still having the the original uh, facade from the from the 20s of the 20th century but uh, you know inside it's it's in the midway of becoming a hotel it was, of course, uh, a place that, that people were, um, how to say, they were entering illegally and destroying the, the substance of the building. So now it's like, you know, something in between. And of course, it's also a, a monument to, of, of, uh, of history and during the Second World War. 
uh, it was an uh, important, uh, how to say, the, 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 the ghetto uh, governing people had their, their uh, they were having their, their office there in this, in this building. Uh, well, but the, the thing in the film is about my memories from different parts of my life. And I just, in this 2012, when I was asked to, to film something, I just uh, come into terms that my life revolved around this place, this hospital, because there is a marketplace where I was trading books in the 80s as a teenager. Uh, I had this nanny near and, you know, the, the, all that is in the film it was just around like 500 meters uh, around this, this building. Uh, what can I tell you? The, the, the funny part is that there is a, um, a phrase, all, all we have is memory that is written on a railing. It was really there. I just came with my camera and doing this memory project and, and to film about my memories. And I just met this, uh, somebody wrote it, just in the place where we found the wallet with my friend, uh, like 30 years ago, 30 more years ago. Uh, so really like, it looks like if I had written this in the place, but not, it was there, which is amazing. All we have left is memory. Somebody have written this. Actually, and I feel it. And and may I jump in real quick, Avi? Can I just jump in real quick? Um, we did not discuss the location. We Martin and I had little understanding of the location that Piat had determined. We must screen his movie outside at night. And it turns out that that hospital is where my aunt, who is now 86, was born in that hospital. So over 70 years separate, two different places in the world. And we are, we are sort of bonded through this random um, shared experience. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bogdan. Uh, Bogdan, you took a long uh, journey to the uh, back history uh, of Casablanca. Can you uh, tell us about your telephonic service? I didn't hear the question. Bogdan? אה, אוקיי, כן, פשוט שומעים בקושי. שומעים אותי עכשיו, כן? עכשיו אתה שומע אותי? כן, כן, אני שומע אותך יותר טוב עכשיו. אוקיי. היי לכולם, זה היה מרגש להיות פה בזום, ולהשתתף בזה אקזיביישן. אני רוצה להודות לכל העבודה שהיינו עם סורית. Uh, for a long time around the, around the, this project. I'm just presenting there uh, in the museum just a really uh, just a fragment of a uh, project. Uh, the name is about Busbir. Busbir uh, was a quarter, uh, a red uh, light, uh, a closed quarter uh, that was uh, created by, by the French in the 20s of, uh, uh, during the 20s uh, century. Yet yeah, during the, 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 the 20s. And uh, it was especially a program to be a, a, a close quarter uh, for prostitution uh, for the soldier at the, the beginning for the French uh, soldier there in Casablanca, a soldier that uh, came from, uh, all the, from France and other parts of uh, the empire, the French empire. And but uh, Step by step, uh, Busbir was uh, became a model for uh, other quarters uh, of the uh, uh, consecrated to uh, to prostitution all over the the, the, the French Empire, 
And there was a start, yes. further, and they uh, start to be a, a, to be a very a, a model, very important model for a, a for a, the kind of a, a using sex workers. A, and my project uh, is dealing especially with a, a Jewish uh, prostitution uh, in this quarter. Uh, in Busbir, the, the, this quarter, there was a lot of uh, Berbers, Berbers are Arab uh, and Muslim uh, prostitutes, uh, but uh, there was also a part of the quarter that was uh, uh, special created, especially uh, created for, uh, for Jewish uh, prostitutes and also for other European uh, uh, prostitutes. So I'm uh, dealing with with the relation between all the population, the, the, the Jewish, the, the Muslims, and, and the Christians, a uh, prostitute there. And uh, my project is uh, in parallel, is, uh, one part is a uh, theoretic uh, project, and the other part is uh, um, working on uh, drawings and uh, paintings, on uh, utensils, on plates, on metal parts, decorative. Uh, uh, objects uh, where I try to uh, to understand or, or to, uh, to to create a kind of uh, relation uh, with not my real memory because I was born in uh, in Algeria and uh, I I uh, moved to at the, the, I was uh, four old when I moved uh, with my family uh, to to France to Marseille and later at uh, fourteen uh, we moved to Israel. So I was, uh, I have not really a lot of memories from, uh, from North Africa, uh, but uh, these years, uh, it was the, the 60s, uh, it was, uh, was a kind of a war, a very, very violent uh, war in the, North Africa, Algeria especially, the independence war, and, but it wasn't called a war, just the eventments. There was very, very, a very, very violent, a million of uh, victims, a, a lot of blood uh, from two sides, from the, the French and the colonial, for, from Jewish also, and uh, for sure, all the, the, all the Muslim and Algerian uh, people will suffer uh, very, very much. I've never been in, uh, in Casablanca, I've never visited a uh, uh, Busbir quarter, uh, but uh, when I start this project, around the, the Jewish people from uh, North Africa. The project was uh, called the Baboons. And I started to, to paint and to draw Baboons and situation of uh, the Jewish people here in Israel. That was the, the, the first point that I start from. And then I discover uh, this quarter and the, the, the Jewish uh, prostitute that was a kind of attraction. Uh, Busbis was, was at, this, at, at this time a kind of a, a park for tourism from all over the world. It was very, very famous. Uh, Busby got a lot of, uh, uh, of publicity from all over the world and the tourists from everywhere uh, was coming to, to visit Busby. Busbis was kind of uh, a recreated orientalist uh, uh, quarter. There was hotels, cabarets, uh, uh, ba cabarets, bars, uh, dance, uh, restaurants, uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, where the tourists uh, were invited uh, to to feel what is the Oriental uh, life uh, on one side, and uh, if they want to, uh, also to to be clients of uh, this prostitute who works there. There was a few hundred of uh, prostitutes. They work uh, very, very hard. They, they start from uh, part of them at the age of 10. And uh, just then the idea was uh, to, uh, to create a, an ideal, a, a ideal brothel. Yes, for a prostitution, they're very hygienic. Uh, where, where the prostitute, the woman, was closed like in a prison uh, from, uh, for all, all their life. And that started, as, as, I, as I said, there were prostitutes at the uh, age of 10 uh, to the age of uh, 25, where a uh, time where they had been too old to continue their work. They was too used 
and uh, so they leave uh, leave uh, uh, Busbir. Busbir was a kind of shame also for the Moroccan uh, uh, for the Moroccans after the independence and also for the French. Uh, so every uh, memory of uh, Busbir was destroyed, and also the Moroccan from one side and the the, the French people from the other side. Uh, try to completely distract uh, this model and the memory of uh, of uh, of this uh, park of uh, prostitution, in a kind of uh, international park of uh, uh, sexual tourism, where uh, people came from all, all over the world to to visit Busbir and to have a a, a sensation, a touch uh, of uh, Orientalism uh, there. It was also, I think, a very interesting thing and hotel for artist people who came there uh, to paint the life and uh, the, the exotic uh, uh, feeling and vision of uh, of Busbir uh, that was especially for artists who were, uh, who were invited there. So, from uh, my point of view, the, the, the project of Busbir just uh, is, is not finished. I'm working on the on the, on Busbir. Uh, till now, and uh, uh, it's an ongoing uh, project. And from my point of view, what is interesting is uh, that uh, it's a kind of uh, to of working on memory or testimony of something of events that I wasn't really uh, there uh, when they uh, when they they, uh, they happen. Uh, so it's kind of uh, work, personal work on myself, on my memory, my personal memory. Also the, the, the city of Marseille where I grew up before I, I immigrate to Israel, it was a kind was quite close to a, to Casablanca, I think. It's, it's, it's a port with a lot of uh, soldier marines for all over the world. And uh, when I was a child there, uh, a lot of prostitution everywhere, so it was impossible to go to school without meeting in the street a prostitute and a sex worker, cabarets, etc., etc. That was uh, uh, when I was uh, six, maybe or eight. It was a kind of uh, something that was questioning myself or my parents: what, what this girl, what these women are doing here while they are standing in the street, uh, what they are waiting for, and. Uh, this project, yes, is a, is a, a, about uh, my personal memories, trauma also, uh, but also is uh, related to the the the, the politics and uh, the the situation here in Israel, uh, because I think that also the the Oriental uh, population, the Orient Oriental people here, women especially. Uh, had uh, uh, experienced a situation that are uh, quite close uh, to the colonial uh, to the colonial vision of uh, the woman uh, by the French in uh, in Morocco, in North Africa, in Algeria, in Tunisia, etc., etc. And uh, the, the the reference between uh, the situation is very uh, for me is is uh, particularly interest interesting. And uh, so that's uh, that's what that's what I have to say. But the part that I and uh, the part of the project that I present uh, in the museum is very uh, it's really just a fragment of all this project. And I hope to to present uh, this project a uh, uh, more uh, largely and uh, more uh, uh, widely uh, as soon as possible. Thanks. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, with pleasure. Uh, is this quarter still exist uh, today? The quarter. The quarter no was completely destroyed uh, by the Moroccan people. It was exactly the same in all the uh, North Africa towns and cities because the French uh, army, especially the army, the beginning was from the army, create brothel. And quarters and, uh, and close the home houses, pardon, and red house all over the empire, all over uh, North Africa, but not just North Africa in the uh, east also. Uh, but uh, one of the first uh, thing that the Algerian people and the Moroccan people do 
uh, when uh, France uh, quit uh, the North Africa, the French uh, uh, it was to destroy all the memory uh, of uh, of these uh, of these uh, uh, places and prostitution. It was really a very very deep shame for the Arab and Muslim people, for the Moroccan, for the Algerian, the Tunisian uh, people uh, to remember uh, this trauma uh, because uh, uh, the idea of the colonial uh, empire of uh, the French people was uh, to, uh, to uh, first to win the women in, in every territory. And uh, they, say they, have, uh, uh, they say that if you have the woman, then you have everything. You have all the, all the land is yours if you have the woman. And so to, uh, to, to create this place to, to force the woman uh, to, uh, to be nude uh, to present them in the postcards everywhere it was it very very common in France during all these years uh, to find uh, to find postcard of uh, of uh, algerian uh, and jewish uh, women also who were completely nude and presenting their body absolutely the contrary of what of the modesty uh, that everybody know of the arab woman and the muslim woman yes but it was presented as, as a very easy woman, a very attractive, open. So in the, in the, the, the ideology of, a, of a, the army was to invite French people to come here and uh, install there and uh, to, col to, to colonize uh, all uh, North Africa and Africa. Uh, so the first, one of the first steps when uh, uh, the French army leaves uh, Algeria and Morocco was to destroy all the all the memory of this quarter, completely destroy the streets, etc. The prostitutes there were were very very uh, a, it was very uh, poor because they, they just uh, get out of uh, with nothing and they just take them out. They change the name of the street there and uh, they try really to. <laughs> To destroy and, uh, every uh, every memory of uh, of uh, this uh, past and this history in the colonial past. Thank you, Ruben, and uh, I like very much your, from the beginning your project of uh, industrial. Uh, uh, colonial sex industry. Uh, and uh, I think nobody knew anything about it, and uh, it reveals a new part of your personal uh, memories, but of our collective uh, uh, memories and trauma. Thank you very much, Ruben. Thank you very much, Ruben. Uh, Marta? Nice to meet you. Do you hear us? Do you hear us, Martha? I don't, we don't hear you. You don't hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes? Yes. Hi, Martha. Hi, let me know, do you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, we hear you. Okay. So, 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 so can, you, can you fill the gaps from Lodge Sunni Orleans, because uh, 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 with my uh, with my talks with, uh, with Robin, you are one of the main instigators, I can uh, of the exhibition in uh, in uh, Lodge, and uh, uh, you follow it in uh, New Orleans. So tell me how how it happened. Because uh, Robin came with an idea, and then it started. How come? Um, that was kind of. It, it depends what do you believe in. It can be perceived as an accident, uh, some kind of gravitation, or maybe a destiny. Um, because I was into oral history. I am in an association that is connected with with community archivism. Um, so we dig into every layer of which history, including the Jewish part of the history, 
Um, and I had a friend that uh, she is a dancer now. And somehow through other connections, through the international art community, um, through the friend who's a dancer and got the email from, from um, Robin, um, I got the Robin contact because my friend decided that there is nothing for her here. Like she, she work with different topics and tools. And she just asked me like, do you maybe will be interested in such a cooperation? So that really, it seems to be an accident because Robin really made a long way of communicating with many, many people before she was connected with me through all these people, <laughs> like, like in a chain communication. And at the time, it was true, I was a PhD student. I left uh, academy uh, without a PhD, um, but I had some memory um, uh, memory studies background uh, so I, I had the, this this more like distance approach and um, actually Robin was my first art cooperation uh, but we somehow also like we, we clicked intuitively after the visit in April 20, uh, 2012 um, and we really allowed to um, to the project to have this community Im impact and also, um, how you say, you know, we really did the, the first two projects really had very different frame, very different tempo and rhythm. And also, you know, the patterns and mechanisms, everything was very different because we decided, because we are very, grounded in our cities in our communities we did not have a lot of money so we also were, were you know pushed because of these material reasons and we decided we will just allow things to happen we will watch the response of the artists for our artists for the, you know for the call and we will see how how it will work and what we can do uh first in Uj and then in new orleans and in Uj, people really responded in a way that was i think surprising for us because um offering them in a call the memories of Anne levy uh skoretsky levy and the memories of the pre-war which citizens we i think we had this feeling that may they may offer something um like some historical project i don't know like i it's it's hard to re remember what we thought at that time but i think we had this intuition that it might go more into the historic um topics but a lot of artists responded with their own memories, their own memory uh, from the childhood, um, or their family memories, somehow inherited uh, memory also. So it became much more personal, um, and it was very um, emotional, I think, also, because uh, uh, community effort, like my all my association help in the first uh, part in uh, Uch, and all the community that is around Robin helped in New Orleans. So we really felt a lot of this fluent, very warm energy that came from just people meeting people and digging into their personal stories with the conscious that every personal story is connected with the collective uh, memory and it's it's connect it's both connected and it's kind of mirroring you know um but also uh, a lot of people obviously had this need to tell the tell whatever they had time to di digest how, how it was said here to to some somehow speak about for the very first time about uh, some parts of the family or personal or city memory 
that is not so easy uh, in terms of you know feeling inside feelings. Um, so, like the the third project, the, 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 this this thing that is happening in your place now, for me is very. Um, it's still very moving that it's you know it has some kind of um, continuation and but also um, it's inspiring everything what I'm reading about it and what I hear now from you but with other hand I really feel detached because when you compare it to the first experience of the first two projects we were very con you know much connected also we had you know chance to meet physically and now not only you are so far away but also we had this experience of covid and then the uh, uh, russian invasion uh, in ukraine um that we really like in poland we really you know, it was a, a, really a lot of us. It still is. Um, so I feel it's um, it's it's very very intense. At the same time, I feel I'm very detached from from whatever is happening, but not in a bad way. It it's kind of the distance for me that I can just you know watch it from a distance. Thank you, Marta. Uh, I want to add something about what I've said about the stages of the exhibition. You are right. Thank you. For you wrote it. it was an exper experimental uh, act in Lodge. And then in your rings, it became much more crystallized. And now it is an institu institutional uh, stage. So the, uh, it, it, it developed. I, I think you, you mean that, and uh, I, I, I put it in other words, but you're right. So thank you, Martha. You heard any sort of uh, about the plateau cave when you, when you create the cave, uh, a childhood cave? Oh, you know know that. That. Yes, ah, yeah. Sorry. And also we like very much your your sound sound piece. You wrote on uh, on uh, uh, Robin's uh, Robin's mother and uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, Hello. Good evening, Courtney. Okay. Uh, can you tell us about your conceptual work of uh, research? Uh, Archaeology of culture, like uh, almost archaeology of culture of uh, New Orleans, uh, uh, geological uh, layers of uh, 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 New Orleans. About the quarter, the work from the quarter. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Is this for me, Courtney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. having trouble hearing a little bit. Okay, um, we are really impressed by uh, your conceptual work of uh, trying to make research uh, of uh, mm. the layer of uh, choose one quarter and uh, you, uh, you dig into the archives and Whatever, and also you use the uh, historian, the uh, histor historian person. Well, and, uh, and uh, you went back, you know, to dig to the, I mean, to the, uh, the lower layer of the culture. Uh, can you tell us uh, something yes. about the process and uh, what uh, push you to make? Yes, it's very nice to see you all. And this is an amazing experience. And I just want to 
say that um, this is fascinating for me just to hear so much more about uh, the connection between trauma and place and how it plays out among all these different places and people and to see um, Robin's, Robin's vision actually happen um, in her epic journey and trying to get this work connected to a specific place to, to Tel Aviv and to Israel is really inspirational. Um, I, I, there's so much to say. I mean, this has been a lot of information to take in and the stories are fascinating. My, my, what I came to the project with was a very specific interest in the gallery where Robin showed the work in New Orleans. Um, Antenna Gallery was a place that I was a founding member of and uh, it moved locations. So the new location uh, was um, a historical building in an area of New Orleans that was outside of the French Quarter. So uh, one, one aspect of memory in New Orleans that I'm fascinated about is just the, um, the depth of it and the impossibility of holding, you know, how difficult it is for people to hold so much information and memory at the same time as you are in the world making new experiences and new memories. And um, I think that um, one of the, the artists here, Ayude, talk, talked about the gaps. And this piece is a lot about the gaps. One thing we wanted to do was recreate the history of this, this piece of property, not just the building, but the, the, the property itself, the land itself. And we went back into the archives in the city government. And we found um, property deeds. We did a lot of research into the previous owners and we discovered that the land that the gallery is on used to be at one point, the farthest written records we could find back were, were that it was a piece of an orphanage and it was for the orphans of uh, mostly the American Civil War. Um, and that was like in the 1860s. And previous to that, it was a plantation. It was not, the building is not on the river. It's several blocks away from the Mississippi River, but that was a piece of a giant plantation property. And then, uh, you know, I worked with a historian who is not with us today, Anita Yesho, and she helped me navigate that whole process. And um, she, she did her PhD on civil rights, American civil rights movement in New Orleans and in the neighborhood that the gallery is located in specifically. And that neighborhood was a pivotal point a, a very important place in the history of civil rights because it is one of the sites of where a, um, a school was forced to integrate to allow black children to attend in the 1960s. And there was one child in particular named Ruby Bridges. She still lives here in New Orleans um, who, who integrated the school. And there's a famous Norman Rockwell painting about her. Um, but that, that whole history of the neighborhood is something that I have lived in the area long enough to see waves of people come through the neighborhood and to see the, the, the waves of people who know nothing about the history of the neighborhood. And just, this, just the, uh, the scope of seeing those changes is something that it's hard for people to, uh, you know, like encapsulate and bring and, and to keep that information in their mind and to bring it into their lives and into their interactions and into their daily dealings in the neighborhood. So we, Anita and I really wanted to take all this information, which are just facts and put them on a table where people could sit down and discover and piece together the puzzle of their part of that neighborhood. You know, they could 
find the section that they were familiar with and um, bring their own stories to that. And during that opening, we, we had amazing interactions. It was such a uh, pleasure to see so many people come and sit down and just kind of dive into the material and then start talking to each other and making connections with each other and telling stories about their memories and experiences of the neighborhood and finding the connections to those stories in the, the, fact, the artifacts that are spread out on the table. Um, so that, that was my approach to trying to um, you know, think about how the personal, people have mentioned how the, the personal and, uh, and the scope of history intersect and collide and that was um, that approach of having the piece be interactive was one way of, of us trying to get people to have a personal relationship with that complex and important history of the neighborhood and that, that site where the gallery is located. Thank you. Uh, Adam? Hi, good evening, Adam. Do you hear me? Uh, yeah. Adam? All done. <laughs> Adam, hi, how are you? Yeah, can you hear me? You hear me? Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, so we would like to hear you about uh, your, uh, your work. Why you choose 161? Uh, or you was... know, this, is, this was the special project just for uh, just for the um, first uh, step of memory project in, in Lodz. But when I listen to you uh, guys, and uh, uh, I understood that that memory project is first about communities, different communities. So what Courtney said and Marta said, uh, mm, uh, Robin came with another community to Lodz, and then Lodz came to New Orleans with uh, also the vision of another community with a past and the future and, uh, and realities. And also, of course, Baram is in, uh, more in, the, in, in the, uh, more institution than, than uh, uh, other locations like Skotnia Gallery or Antenna House. But there is also the part of the community because it's a kibbutz run. And I found during the opening, the small example how community exists, but really happened. The opening and the day before and then your friends, uh, how, how, how exists the hospitality about art and, and this exhibition. Uh, so when I when I uh, opened the idea to to, to show uh, the photographs with my mother, <clears throat> now I found that it was also about a uh, story about communities, very local. Since the orphan house, when my mother was child, then uh, during the second war in the labor camp in Berlin. Then first she found the international communities of slaves from different countries. And the best friend was the Ukrainian uh, women, which worked with, with her few years there. And now what is coming to Uj after the Russian occupation, then for example, to Uj came uh, thousand, thousand women with, uh, with babies, older and younger and without uh, husband because her husband are usually fighting an army in Ukraine. So it's coming another memory uh, uh, which will be created for next generation. And, uh, and of course, uh, artists first are the member of the local uh, communities. And uh, uh, the art for me can exist without relations uh, to local communities and local people and the relations between what's going around <clears throat> us as an artist, you know, doesn't matter that where we are working. And uh, after Baram, uh, we did with uh, 
uh, our common uh, friends, Yakov Hefetz, the international project at Skodnia Gallery about name, nothing come with good out of it. So posters and video art and, uh, and really important because uh, now, like, like Yakov sent me a letter yesterday, uh, this project is still going on and uh, because of the situation in Israel and the fighting about democracy, what uh, uh, we try to, to, to do <clears throat> in, the, in the past, but without, uh, without this result, what probably uh, you guys in Israel will, will, will do <clears throat> in the future. Uh, but this is also the questions about, about uh, the role of artists. You know, of course, the art can change you know, the, 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 the political situation, but we are the member of the communities and the community, communities uh, can change the world and our uh, uh, reality. Thanks. My two paintings that there they are part of the, of the project, huge project that I did about looted art, looted art and looted books that uh, wounded uh, by the Nazis uh, during the Second World War. Uh, I dig for two years, around two years uh, in archives, and I took inspiration from uh, photos that I found uh, in archives, and I decided to, to handle the, the collective memory that we have here in Israel, the people that grew up in Israel, uh, have like um, a memory from the Holocaust that in our DNA, uh, collective uh, memories about the Holocaust. My grandparents came from Poland uh, before the Second World War, but I grew up here and I grew up with a lot of uh, images, horrible images from the Holocaust. Like I passed, I felt that I passed the Holocaust. And I decided to, to look about this memory through objects. Don't touch the, the, the photos of the people or um, the, 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 the camps. And I decided to choose to look at the things uh, through the objects and through the, <coughs> through the places. And uh, during my work, I, I looked at and I tried to understand why it, so, it was so important to the Nazis to wound it and, to, and take uh, the books and the artwork and, and try to, to cut the culture, not just to kill the people and, and to, to cut the culture and why it's, it was so important. And unfortunately, it's still actual. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, somebody would like to ask uh, the artist or uh, something. Okay, so we we are coming to the end of uh, this uh, talk and I would like to, to, to thank you all the artists uh, and especially to uh, Robin Levy and uh, the people who joined us uh, and uh, they, they were supported the, the exhibition and uh, 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 producing the catalog. And of course, uh, thanks to, to, to the artists here and, and to all the people here in the this uh, small conversation. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks to Nelly that uh, helped. Uh, without Nelly, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> without Nelly, it wouldn't have worked. And uh, thanks to the whole artist. Uh, no? With heart, with all my heart. Uh, Thank you. And I uh, hope we will do something yeah. uh, in the future, something interesting again. Yes, I hope that this continues. Thank you.
Sorry, Miss Ruby. Uh, yes, Ruby. We are. Oh. Just thank you to everyone and particularly those who are in the gallery. We understand the existential times that are more heightened now than ever. Um, we are praying for you and we take um, instruction from how y'all are in the streets and you will be, you know, you are not tolerating the intolerance. And I do hope that um, we can regroup another time um, in the, during an easier space in your in your existence. Um, I thank everybody for everything you've done for this effort, um, the supporters, the artists, uh, just everyone has done uh, an enormous amount of uh, work. And thank you for. Uh, allowing us to build our own international community, our own international artists and creative group. And I hope that we can continue building together. And uh, we, we are producing uh, on this day, the catalog it is on the print. When it will be ready, we will send it to you. So thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. All the artists, I, I didn't see you before. <laughs> it's the first time, and I hope not the last time we shall meet and walk together. Thank you, everybody, and uh, everyone. And uh, um, we'll continue from here to our. To, to our uh, political affairs. I hope you don't have such. So, good evening. <laughs> Thank you, Sareen. Bye, Sareen. Thank you, Sareen. Thank you, Ron. Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.